Hello, yesterday I posted a video, Faith, Hope and Charity. Link will be in the description. Now, in that I mentioned um, uh, Freemasons and Faith, Hope and Charity and the good works connected with that. Now, in previous videos along similar themes, I, I, I have the same type of comments and rather than talk about it in the comments, I think I'll just I'll do a video on it and I want to show you a very important part of history, an essential part of history, which we are not told. Now, the Masons are said to be at the center of every conspiracy uh, out there, uh, but the Masons are just one organization, uh, others, odd fellows, mechanics, druids, uh, temperance, good templars, and many others, foresters, um, free gardeners. Uh, these are the organizations which are very important but have been written out of history and so it's often said these are the, these organizations uh, you know whenever there's the G and the all seeing eye that they're at the center of every conspiracy well I'm going to present you with some information from, uh, and we'll basically challenge that and actually say that there there is very much in in, in many many very important ways the actual reverses happen and there has been a conspiracy against them and I and Please bear with me. I know this is immediately going to trigger a bunch of people, but no, let's just follow this through and please trust me. Well, I'll take you through it and I will uh, illustrate my point. The, the, the history has been dewritten to present, well, to malign these groups because they are very, very dangerous to the establishment. And so firstly, we'll begin. So... Uh, well, for secret societies, okay, immediately they're going to go to Illuminati and to Masons. Well, Odd Fellows, Druids, uh, Free Gardeners, Independent United Order of Mechanics, the Independent Order of Odd Fellows are just some of these, and they and Temperance, Good Templars, they have been essentially removed from the history books. And I'll show you some examples of that. Uh, first, to begin with, we'll begin with the Odd Fellows, the IOOF, and uh, where are we? Okay, uh, bear with me a moment. Okay, so first I want to begin with the independent uh, order of odd fellows, or the um, well, there are a couple. Just I'm going to just refer to them as odd fellows because, uh, as with so many of these groups, there are many little independent lodges. It's not one grand, united, grand, vast conspiracy, and not only that, the history. Uh, the importance of them has been removed from history for, by the very same people who, are, for instance, Rockefeller Rothschilds are said to be behind the Masonic conspiracy. At the higher levels, uh, they don't need a secret society. They've got their own thing going on. Uh, the Masons, Odd Fellows, Druids are not secret societies. You can, they have big buildings with the banners. You can look them up on uh, the telephone books. You, you can yeah, see their buildings. They're not. They're a society that have secrets, but they're not a secret society. But the uh, so this is um, some insignia regalia of the Odd Fellows and we'll, okay, Foresters of America. So the Foresters are another, the ancient order of Foresters, as they're also called. Now, if you look through, uh, well, friendly society or a mutual aid society, and that's what they were, and they were very important. They they were for the common person. They are not part of an elite conspiracy. The ancient order of foresters, the all-seeing eye. So these will be the same themes in their insignia, like the all-seeing eye, um, unity, benevolence, and concord. The same themes uh, along the lines of um, faith, hope, and charity with these particular organisations. So the foresters was essentially a trade union in a way, but um, people working in the forestry industry would pull their resources together to to help with uh, well foresters they would you know it was a deadly profession so uh, the widows and their children would be left behind and so they would organise uh, scholarships um, uh, pensions uh, even then nursing homes uh, doctors and lawyers and all these services the the common person could only access through this organization you couldn't just call up a corporation and get health insurance you couldn't just run down to a government run hospital they did not exist these organizations were were at the heart and the beginning of these now before we go to there again the the independent uh, order of odd felt of uh, foresters again the columns all of us you know the same symbols especially the all-seeing eye 
the the handshake and again this secret handshake as it said now this was a way for instance one of the services they would give is if you were a member and you had a secret password and you have a secret handshake when you were moving from town to town they would often run maybe a tavern or they would or they would invite you to stay in their home so again before you had motels and hotels and uh, you know which were again more for the rich people for the common person the only way to get accommodation food not be robbed, not be uh, tricked, or not you know, and comment was to be a group, a member of this group, and to know the secret password and the secret handshake. They couldn't just have any old Tom, Dick, and Harry walk along and abuse them. You had to be in good standing, which meant you had to pay your dues, which was a very small percentage of your wage, and that small percentage of a wa your wage would pay for health care, legal services, ac accommodation, either free or cheap, and again, uh, friendship. And, you know, you always would have a friend if you were a uh, member of this group. And IOF, Independent Order of Foresters, again, the all-seeing eye of a handshake. So that's where it comes from. And it is a secret. Okay, again, you'll never walk alone. So when you're a member, they will look after each other. It was a fr often called the Fraternal Society. You know, you're, you're still now, Masons will call each other brother because you were a brother in that, you know, you look after one another. Not necessarily, you know, there is always a, whenever there's an organized, whenever there's more than three people together, it's someone's going to be a bastardo, you know, or when you have 10 in an organization or a hundred, you're going to have bad people in there. That, you know, so any group is going to have bad people in there. So to say that, uh, again, this vast conspiracy thing, well, it's not true. Now, um, independent order of foresters, so especially in the uh, 1800s into the 1900s as they grew, they were able to build hotels, insurance companies to service their workers better. Usually, they were originally just, you know, in the local town hall they would get together, but then as they grew, they were able to develop. So this is a temple building in Toronto, uh, it's Canada, and foresters and, and the forestry industry, very important there. And they all, so they also organized uh, days, days before radio and television parades. They would have uh, organized dances, balls, uh, fates, charity events. So it also was a center for entertainment. If you were a member, so independent order of foresters, if you were a member, you got many, a lot of different services. But, okay, before we go to there, so, okay, before I type, well, let's, I'll just get straight to it, I suppose. So this is not only with the foresters, but I like to. Okay, I've got a couple of old dictionaries. So I've got a World Book Encyclopedia, 1973, and a Year 2000 version. Now, in the 1973, Foresters of America is a fraternal uh, benefit society, which one was, uh, which was once part of the ancient order of foresters. It provides insurance for its members, has paid over 100 million for its members' illnesses, bene benevolent purposes, and death benefits. Branches of foresters are organized in the form of 12 grand courts and about 400 sub-courts. So it's not just like some, you know, like the Grand United Lodge in London is, you know, uh, in, in terms of masonry. There's also many, many independent little organizations. That's how it really worked in the start. So now when it's spoken about, it's, it's, it's a vast conspiracy with this, you know, uh, one grand leader who controls it all. No, it's not the way it worked. Not the way it worked at all. It was about small independent lodges that would... So one small lodge in one town, if if the uh, business went belly up there, p the workers couldn't pay and they couldn't contribute, and so the lodge would collapse. But if lodges got together and pooled their money together, they could support one another. So that's how it really worked. Now, in recent times, it has been con you know brought under a central control, but it's still in in we don't hear about them. But there are still many small lodges that work in this familiar way, but. 1973, it was noteworthy in World Book Encyclopedia. By the year 2000, it doesn't exist. It's been written out of history. This is what you will find consistently through so much of official history, and not just the you know, establishment um, and elite-controlled history. You'll also see it not spoken about by those who claim to be uh, truth seekers. You know, we, we're uncovering the vast Titanic conspiracy. Uh, BS to the extreme, mate. They're 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 doing a great. They're actually working against, and I would call them plants. Um, 
uh, yeah, part of it. You know, if Lennon said, if you want to control the opposition, you own it. So we have on the internets, we have Ike and Jones who consistently and persistently put this stuff down and say it's all vast demonic conspiracy. Never once, never once do they talk about this. Never once. They, they, they're frauds or extremely ignorant. Now, we'll go to the IOOF, uh, Independent Order of Oddfellows. Same thing. Um, uh, friendship, love and truth. So again, they would organise schools, scholarships, uh, you, could, you know, cheap um, accommodation, it's safety, benefits. Now, again, we see the snake very much in the vein of Asclepius, the cornucopia and the anchor, which are the same theme, senior masons, and even the beehive, their cornucopia, once more, the horn of plenty. You know, you always would, we would be fed and, you know, uh, now they're very much connected because all of these organizations org are, are arranged in the same way what Masons are. Masons didn't invent this. It's, you know, they're one element of this older stream of mutual aid societies and, you know, uh, this, who have these esoteric symbols behind them. Okay, I already mentioned the Foresters were written out of a World Book Encyclopedia. Now, 1973, the same encyclopedia, Independent Order of Oddfellows, a fraternal benevolent society they organised. Well, the same thing, insurance, protection, scholarships, uh, schools, hospitals, pharmacy, healthcare, and, and they were huge. So in the... Uh, you know, at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, they had millions of members, millions of them around the world. Now, each member would have a family which was also protected under them. So they, the widow would get widow's insurance, the children would get scholarships, and uh, and and the men themselves would be, uh, protect, you know, there was no work cut, there was no occupational health and safety, there was no death benefits, there was nothing like that. Only through these organisations it will come. So all the benefits that we... Um, take for granted now were born from these organisations and have been taken over by the government and by corporations because they saw the power of making people dependent on them as where these organisations saw the power of making people powerful through mutual aid, through help. But 1973, it was noteworthy. They didn't go away. The, or the uh, IWF have always been around but now it's disappeared from the history once again. And even the Oculus. Now, Oculus is another secret society, but I won't go into that now. Uh, this is an emblem, standard emblem of the Oddfellows. Even we might notice that, but the heart and the hand. The triple link. This is a dead giveaway to Oddfellow symbolism. Uh, in the Pickers show, I saw them once. They visited someone who had um, Oddfellow artifacts. He wouldn't discuss about their rituals, but this is a Goliath paper mache mask, which they would use in their rituals. Again, we see the all-seeing eye, the columns. Uh, it's, it's the same as what, you know, the uh, Aristotle, okay, that's something different, Oddfellow Memorial here in Sydney. Uh, this is from the 1920s now. Like, I'm going to do a longer version on the Oddfellows. This actually talks about how the uh, health system arranged by the lodges was broken apart by the, uh, what they could, well, the AMA, the, the doctors and the lawyers hated these clubs because they had to compete for lodges with them, so they they despise the, the the elite despise the fact that they had to work for these organisations, and that's why they're still maligned now. Uh, Goliath mask again, the, the handshake, the same emblems and symbols. Okay, again, all saying I, the triple link. Independent Order of Oddfellows, what does it stand for? Well, the IWF in Australia is now demutualized. It's a corporation and it's one of the largest financial services. It, its origins is now lost. It is now shareholders, holders. You even might notice the Vesica there. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're a big company now. And so the IWF used to be good. Now this, the IWF, Key Invest, and a few other companies, they demutualize. It's not about mutual aid anymore it's about a corporation uh, and cheating people so IWF again the heart and the hand the dove the beehive the eye the triple link okay so independent order of odd fellows the triple link and this 
very Masonic board, but what does it mean? Well, we see the all seeing eye, but there are um, uh, friendship, love, and truth being the, the, the triple link. Now, we I've recently did a video of a rod of Asclepius, which is a, the Roman god of of health and healing, because they would provide health services. We also have the scythe and the skull and the hourglass symbols of death, because in they would, uh, you know cemeteries, funeral costs, uh, widows' pensions, scholarships for children you know, whose father had passed away and you know, was no longer bringing in the money. These are what these symbols also represent. We have the cornucopia, which is uh, you, you have fresh fruit and grain there, fresh produce, as in the Roman, uh, Greco-Roman Demeter or Ceres, as she called, as in Ceres, fresh produce. We also have the beehive, which is a symbol of organization and industry but it also represents the Roman god Aristeus who was the god of beekeeping and cheese making amongst other things so Aristeus is the god of food that would last you can put that on you know honey cheese lasts on the shelf as where fresh uh, fruit and produce does not last but you know again so in the summer but, you know you would have fresh food in the winter you would have to rely on honey and cheese and these types of things so that's another symbol where, where even in good times and bad times, they would look after you. There's always multiple levels to these, and it's just, again, internet style, oh, it's a skull, therefore it's, you know, they're behind death or something like that. Well, um, again, another, you know, the same thing, the Asclepius, the, uh, the skull, the hourglass, the scythe. Friendship and the handshake and the secret handshake because only members would be able to get their services They couldn't afford to look after everyone. We also see the, the sun and the moon the seven stars Weights and measures nice one there as well the three columns um, the cornucopia there and And a lot of their rituals in the odd fellows and all these organizations in fact are, are based around biblical stories uh, you know, for instance, they said, "What do masons do? Masons make better men." And it was, you know, to develop truth, honesty, and friendship. And these, you know, everyone just focuses on the masons. But there were many organisations like this, and they organised all those things I mentioned earlier, from entertainment to protection to, again, the the mother without the child, also schooling and wisdom, and food and and law and order. So even back then. Uh, it was more like there were police around, but policing was also done on a more of a local level, mutual aid, people looking after one another, looking after their community, looking after their family, and coming together. And this is what what it was. Now, it's a thought you see the symbols there anyway. So the IWF now is a in the, is a uh, for profit private company uh, with shares. Uh, rather, it used to be a mutual society. Peter Ogden, uh, sea captain. Now, in originally the Odd Fellows in America were connected directly to the Odd Fellows in England, but because of the uh, um, War of eighteen twelve and American Revolution, all that stuff, the American Odd Fellows did not want to be connected to the English Odd Fellows. It was not a good thing to be you know, so. But at that time, in Canada and in America, uh, Odd most Odd Fellows. Well, the larger ones was for whites only. So Peter Ogden, African American, went to England and got a warrant to create uh, Odd Fellows, which would allow uh, uh, black people to join. And we'll see that in some other organisations, such as uh, Good Templars and Temperance and stuff. So, if you look back at the, in, yeah, uh, prior to the New Deal and the Insurance Acts here in Australia and England, uh, things like the NHS, uh, we're sort of We've been promoted that these are really, really good things, but well, they're they're not as good as what you might think because it was about bringing people under the control of government and corporations and moving away from mutual aid societies. Uh, the Rebecca Lodge was like the woman's uh, organisation within the Odd Fellows. They still have a few uh, independent order of Odd Fellows friendly societies, so they're still around, but they're not as big as they were. But they're still, and and they tend to operate more like corporations now. For instance, here in Australia, before the health insurance become went under government control, people such as the Odd Fellows who had been arranging health insurance, health care for some time, were expert at it. And what happened was that the government, when they organised the first governmental health care systems, 
they didn't know how to arrange it. So they looked to these organisations and would issue contracts to them. Now, over the years, the, it, well, they become demutualized, and so, but we still have some traces of these independent um, organisations that are not for-profit corporations run by the elite to control it. Uh, for, yeah, uh, the previous video on faith, hope, and charity I mentioned there's a was a link in there to be well people such as the Rockefellers, the AMA, the uh, Law Society despised these organisations because. Our credit unions was another feature that they would provide. People could not get credit from the banks unless they were rich and had uh, a lot of collateral, collateral. So the only way that the common man could get how, buy a house and get the housing loan was through the credit unions and building societies is another term for it. Now it wasn't just about providing them money. Building societies also operated on the principle everyone let's get together, we'll build a house and you know John gets one this week and then next week we'll come together and we'll build another one and then Sam and and eventually everyone would get a turn so it wasn't just about the money it was also about mutual aid people coming to help you build building society and that's another element that we've lost uh, odd fellow symbols again beehive same same you know these are there's a lot of depth to this and and these emblems and again if you, if you show it, typical internet's uh, snake oil merchants like this guy will tell you know everything's evil every you know all masons are bad it's uh yeah it's just uh shocking now this guy is he's working for them maybe he's not getting paid for it but to to line his pockets he's selling snake oil to make everyone hate these these clubs show me once where he, where he talks about this or or elaborates on this because i've never heard it i've only heard him spread hate and ignorance uh, same thing is with uh, infotainment, Miss Infotainment, Alex Jones, the same thing, everything's an evil conspiracy, everything's Masonic, transhumanist, satanic or whatever. They've got a long list of exposing problems, they've never provided an answer. Uh, even he exposed himself recently because he admitted that he's an entertainer, that these rants that he does is for entertainment purposes. He's role playing, that, that's what he is, this, this, this is not there's nothing good from these people. They, they, I've, yeah, they still research, then they uh, water it down and his, and and then add hysteria to it, and then they present a false narrative about it. So it's a, a kernel of truth wrapped around in hatred, ignorance, and hysteria. And uh, yeah, again, these guys are just uh, scum. Now. Uh, Odd fellows again. You'll see the same. So the uh, Templars chart so again. The dove, all seeing eye. This type of stuff. Also the Ark, uh, for you know the Ark of the Covenant because the, they're often called antediluvian societies, pre-flood societies. The buffaloes, such as Fred Flintstone, was a, a member of the Lodge Buffaloes Lodge. That's another one of these organisations. Uh, uh, everyone loves Raymond. The dad goes to the Lodge Knights of Columbus. Now you only see the old men there because. That's all that's left of of them. But back when they were young, the only way that they could you know get together and access health insurance, scholarships, widows' pensions, funeral uh, costs, and insurance was through organisations such as this. Now we just get on the phone and we put all our faith in government and corporations who hate these organisations because they take away their power. These you know, and and they promote Alex Jones and and David Ike who pr who promote this hysteria and ignorance surrounding this particular topic so a lot of the trade unions um, and uh, for instance uh, uh, an early anarchists in America when you see the history you just get presented that there is some sort of terrorist organization um, they were involved in early trade unions early mutual aid societies and, and again this type of thing it's just a, it's a damn shame that it's uh, all lost uh, again, more board. Again, just you know, you see these these boards are just you know, if you're unfamiliar, be they uh, just would just be comp uh, Masonic evil or whatever. National pharmacies was founded by the South Australian odd fellows because you know, a doctor and pharmacist. I mentioned in the earlier video, you had a lot of snake oil merchants selling snake oil, and so by being a, a member of here, they would hire a pharmacist and they would get together and they would buy quality medicines on bulk. And you could be guaranteed that the medicine you were getting was actually what it says it was, rather than snake oil. 
getting these same emblems. Um, all right, odd fellows. So again, cornucopia. The, see how I mentioned earlier, which we got the fresh produce overflowing. It's the summertime harvest, but you also have the beehive, which is again representation of not only organisation and industry, but also like cheese and, as in Aristeus, uh, preserved foods as well. A bit like a can drive. We still, you know, still hear about that now. Uh, again, they've been written out of history, and. And when you do hear about them, it's it always in a very, very negative light and never ever do they discuss these uh, issues. Okay, now I mentioned earlier the foresters. Another one is temperance. And when we hear about, uh, for instance, here in Balmain in Sydney, there's a, uh, there's a cluster of odd fellows, uh, temperance and masons. So we see Chelmsford Lodge and uh, Hall. And you can see the compass and square, but also these symbols of the Temperance Society. Temperance is usually thought of as an anti-drinking society, which it was, but it is also on uh, Masonic lines. It was a friendly society, a mutual aid society. So Balmain Temperance Hall. And again, you'll see with the architecture, the palmet and these same symbols are re reoccurring over and over again. Now, just on the side street, we also have the Temperance Lodge. And give me a moment, the computer is not quite keeping up with me. But uh, uh, so again, all, if you're not familiar with them, you'd almost be confused, you'd think that they're uh, uh, Masons, but they're organized along the same same line. This was not. Uh, the term Odd Fellow goes back at least to the 1400s, and it was used as a term for someone who's a member of a craft guild. So whether of our carpenters, stone cutters, tilers, these types of um, professions, that was generally you know an odd fellow. Then later the odd fellow uh, societies, organisations built up, and now it's a more specific term. For instance, you often hear the term free and accepted masons. Anyone can join a mason lodge now. Prior to you know. Uh, Two, three centuries ago, you had to be a mason or or a tiler or a brick mason, one of these professions. Okay, it's just not keeping up with me. Um, okay, where were we? Druids, foresters. Okay, I have to pause a moment. Okay, pardon for that. The com computer was slowing, but this is the Temperance Lodge Hall. So just around the corner from, so there we have Chelmsford Hall and the Masons. Uh, there we have the uh, Temperance Hall, and just down the side of his street here, we have the Lodge Hall in 1900. And you will often see these buildings dated to around that time because that was the time prior to corporate and government um, getting involved in education, healthcare, hospitals, these types of things. You had to, you know, these were the only people taking care of the common man. This is in Balmain. Uh, now it's become gentrified and, uh, you know, the latte sipping crowd. It's very cool and fashionable. Um, but in the day, Balmain was the, at the beating heart of the uh, working man um, and industry. And there above the door, love, it's a bit broken, purity and fidelity. Again, so faith, hope and charity, this, again, the same. Uh, things going on. Okay. Um, now, temperance. Uh, so down in Melbourne, but you also see it's established 1876. Once again, around you know. Bef uh, so whether it's the growth in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and America, groups such as Oddfellows, Temperance, Foresters, Mechanics, uh, Free Gardeners. So this is T and G, the Temperance and General. So there are these large buildings, especially in regional centres all around Australia. They they created a, a, an insurance system for before the the takeover of the corporations, and because they had so many members, they were able to afford these types of things. It wasn't that the Rothschilds and Rockefellers were funding them; they looked after each other, and they were able to build this type of wealth. And so these town halls and uh, where the local dance was, they would again organise uh, fates, parades, 
all sorts of entertainment as well. It wasn't just about insurance. It was also this feeling of, of friendship. Now, if you're a member of a lodge, you're also expected to attend uh, the meetings. That was like a, you didn't just pay your dues. You also were expected to be an active member. So it wasn't just, again, it wasn't just about money. You were expected to attend the functions. And you're also, expect, for instance, if a, if a fellow member got sick, uh, the basic function was that they would organise and say, if someone got sick, you would arrange your neighbour to, to cook food and another guy would come in and mow your lawns or so, do your laundry and take care of this. So there was the, the money aspect of it, but at the heart of it, it was mutual aid about people coming together to look after one another. And that's another view of the T&G building in Newcastle, but the Sons of Daughters and Temperance. So it was a friendly society. When we mention, if you, most people when they hear about temperance, they think it was a movement against alcoholism. Well, that was definitely part of, of temperance, but it was a friendly society as well. And again, the all-seeing eye, emblems and symbols, uh, again, Asclepius, the Fasces, um, uh, harvest and produce, looking after mutual aid. Uh, in Washington, in the Washington Memorial, uh, Washington Monument, right, I've got the picture up here somewhere, so the Washington Monument, uh, famous now there, uh, all around the Washington Monument, there are a series of plaques and for and uh, various organisations, but uh, Masons, Odd Fellows, and these other groups will get to, okay, so uh, the Native United Sons was another one, and again you see the emblems, but yeah, Masons, Temperance, Odd Fellows, uh, Association of Journeymen was another one of these groups, now the Journeymen still around, uh, you can, uh, so stone cutters of Philadelphia, Plumbers, early electricians, um, steam workers, metal workers, uh, the association of journeymen. Now a journeyman, you can still there's still a bit of a legacy of that. For instance, in Germany, where you see these travelling craftsmen, with, where they dress up in old-fashioned style and they will do their apprenticeship, and then they're expected to travel around for years to achieve their uh, to, to to gain their ticket. But again, with the same emblems and, and symbols. But of course, there's uh, yeah, Masons, Odd Fellows, uh, and other groups there as well. But this is the uh, Sons of Temperance. This is one of the plaques here at the Washington Monument. Another Temperance, Temperance, Temperance. Again, from the Templars of the Honor, Honor and Temperance Organization. Um, the handshake. I mentioned, uh, recently did the Mifras one with the uh, with the torches. Again, Noah's Ark and the Antediluvian societies, as they're often called. Okay, now when you think of temperance, it's usually this lips that touch, liquor shall not touch ours. Anyway, back in the day, I don't think they were quite so good at marketing. But <laughs> anyway, all right. Uh, but again, so the temperance just showing the progress of the drunkard. So it wasn't just about an anti-alcohol movement. There was a really big problem at that time as well, no doubt. But it was a friendly society. Order of the Sons of Temperance, Love, Purity, Fidelity, Friendly Society. So they, organ again, organising basic health insurance, funeral cover, widow's pensions, scholarships for education. They would get together and organise uh, creating hospitals and these types of things as well. So that's uh, temperance. Now, foresters I've done, good templars. Now another one, and the good templars are connected to the temperance society. They're very um, linked. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Peter uh, Brog Ogden and the um, organising Odd Fellows for the um, black community. There you can see uh, how important it was for these community as well. They, you know, they, they weren't really looked after. Now, independent order of good Templars, friends of Temperance, welcome here. So it's a little bit of a link. Um, again, the snake of Asclepius, I'll be seeing the top there. But again, the all-seeing eye, the same principles, the, the uh, cross and the anchor, the handshake. Now, Temperance was um, multiracial. 
because you'll see other so it wasn't just for blacks it was also for whites as well but uh, unlike um, certain groups it wasn't divided by race we're all seeing eye have a handshake once more these same themes of of mutual aid and and uh, sobriety because the the drunkenness at the time was destroying families so that was one of the key themes bit of a canvas going on there again the anchor uh, there we see um, again so it's, it was it was a multiracial organization and another one uh, good Templars faith hope and charity so again recent upload was about faith hope and charity okay so that's the Templars good Templars now uh, another one before I go to those oh, I did a video a while back and I'll tr I'll try to f I'll link that in the description as well but the Druid Society and this is 1905 meeting of the Druids and uh, that's how Stonehenge looked at the time so again we can uh, it was a bit of a thing there's a bit of a conspiracy thing about Stonehenge being faked there are plenty of pictures before the reconstruction and the archaeological work at Stonehenge so it has been rebuilt no doubt but uh, there's some really crazy stuff about the uh, Stonehenge being faked it's just it's just not true I uh, did a, again video on the Druids. The same thing. They were a friendly society. They would uh, organize, and and uh, the Druids were especially famed for uh, organizing a Stedford singing competitions, dancing competitions. So it wasn't just about mutual aid. It was also about organizing entertainment and uh, a, a, a feeling of community before radio and television and the internets. Winston Churchill was an odd fellow. Winston Churchill was a Druid. Now, immediately you might go, oh, this is proof that the elite run these things. Well, they would take abuse, they would abuse these things. So Winston Churchill was a politician. Still now you see, you know, um, politicians attending church and, and joining these clubs t to gain votes and to, to appear to be, you know, with the people. But they, they've got their fingers anywhere where they can get popularity and, and appear to be one of the commoners. They will take that opportunity. That hasn't changed. And so uh, these, you know, yeah, and same thing with Queen Elizabeth and the Queen Mother. Uh, she was a Druid and she would attend Druid functions. But the Druids and all these organisations were common people. They weren't for the elite. The elite and the, the professions disliked them. And yeah, I've mentioned that anyway. Again, Stonehenge, a Druids meeting. Uh, Druids in Belgium for the uh, baptism, I think it was one of the princes. And again, we see this symbol which has now become connected and Valir as well. This is a constant symbol, Masons, Oddfellow, just all these organisations. Uh, this is now being, uh, of course, a little Austrian. Uh, in Melbourne, and there's also in Sydney, we see Druids House, again showing it because they, they were all good. they ran credit unions insurance and they were able to build some of the earliest nicer buildings, including uh, community halls and this thing as well. And again, just a Corinthian order. Uh, so this is a, a canvas leaves, which are, would be the Greek Corinthian order. We also see the palm columns, which are Egyptian as well. And that's again some, I won't go into that, I've done that in other videos anyway. Uh, the Rebecca Lodge in uh, California. So it's again these w women, local women, getting together in and uh, organising local charity events, so organising local events. It's not uh, a purely, uh, you know, millionaires' mansions, billionaires' corporate leaders. Uh, this is this this is the element that's been lost and not talked about, but it's still around. Okay, it's pretty much Druids friendly society. So until recently. Again, the same thing where they organise nursing homes, retirement villages and home care. That's what they did traditionally and they're still doing it now. Um, but again, because of the uh, uh, government involvement in these types of things and corporations getting it, they tend to now have contracts. So, for instance, the uh, nursing homes here in Australia tend to be run by one or two really big corporations. But there are still a few Druids, um, Masons and Odd Fellows uh, retirement villages, home care, nursing home packages uh, going on. Okay, Druids, 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 again you still see ancient, okay so for instance the credit union ran from 1957 to 2000, it's now been liquidated, uh, maybe if you've 
one of your um, ancestors was a member, there might be some money owing to you. So in some of these uh, temperance and general druid society, these credit unions, they're still holding onto money which hasn't been declared. So that just might be something of interest, whether in Australia but elsewhere as well. Uh, Druids in Sheffield, still again affordable care, the friendly society, not a corporation for profit, it's a uh, non-profit organisation. Uh, again Queen Elizabeth uh, or Prince, Prince, Princess at that time, but again they, they get involved in these things, but these, you know, look at all the people, these, there's that's not the noble. There's not enough. You put all the nobles together. There's not enough there. This was a grassroots organisation, and then to, yeah. So whether it's Churchill or the Queen and these other people, and again, uh, curry curry. So the Druids uh, and Odd Fellows in around the Newcastle area, Temperance as well. I mean, um, they arranged, organised schools, hospitals back in the day before the government and corporate interests such as the Rockefellers broke these organisations up and got involved with it to take control. People helping one another. Okay. Okay, let's try and finish this one quickly. Now, there are a few other ones worth mentioning. The Okay, I'll have to pause and just finish it off quickly. Okay, another secret society, and they're not a secret society, that's... Uh, uh, misinfo that's been put on around them is the uh, ancient order of free gardeners and again the sun the moon the seven stars the all-seeing eye the anchor the beehive same emblems same symbols providing the same function it's another one of them now again if you see this oh it's masonic it's satanic it's whatever no and finally we'll end with the uh, independent order of mechanics. So once again you see this emblem, this is not masons, this is the mechanics. And there we see the mechanics, so this, they're very strong. Okay, before we go, let's put the link. I'll put the link to this video in the description, the independent order of the mechanics. You see they're still very strong, especially uh, Jamaica, around the Caribbean and in Florida, the independent order of mechanics. As the name says, they're mechanics, plumbers, uh, working people, not elite, and it's not this, again, this has got the, the origin and the, the point of these organisations was for the working people. This link will be in the description, it's very interesting, you can just follow it through with uh, some others, but again, this, uh, you know, that they're at the cent these people are not at the centre of all this conspiracy. This is not satanic emblems. This is a, 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 the ancient of, you can still see the G there. So they're connected, you know, what's just generally referred to as Masonic has a rich, important history. So Australia, Canada, America, uh, in England, and oh, here in Australia as well, they were so important to the founding of all these things we take as sacred and, and we take for granted, whether it's health insurance, funeral insurance, scholarships, widows' pensions. All of these things was founded by them and was actually in, in the period, especially just before and just after World War I, was taken over by the, by the elites because firstly they could make profits of, of them and secondly it was about control because people looking after each other do not need the government. They do not be, need big companies and so that's what's happened. Again, we see there again the same emblems. It's... Um, compass and the square, the columns, the, uh, the celestial sphere which has the constellations and the terrestrial sphere, earth, as in uh, terrestrial, the earth, terra. Uh, beehive, once more again, and all those associated um, independent order of mechanics in London. And so these emblems which are so often maligned is part of love, unity, honour, truth, benevolence, secrecy as well, and fidelity. Now, why the secrecy? Well, for instance, in the, uh, I forget the exact year, you can look at the um, Unlawful Oaths Act, the government in England, and it, which applied to all the colonies, 
uh, was uh, there was a law you could not take a secret oath, an unlawful oath, because the government did not want you to do this. They did not want you organising without their... So if you wanted to start a lodge, you had to get a licence from the government. So uh, unlicensed groups such as this had to operate in secrecy. This extends back to the craft guilds period and, and the Inquisition and such. You know, If you weren't operating under the church or the state or royalty, you were breaking the law. And that's why these organisations were so powerful and the need for secrecy. Because... Yeah, no one was. If you didn't look after yourself, no one else was going to. And again, the New Deal, the Insurance Acts, was about breaking up these organisations and getting people dependent on a welfare state and on government control, putting faith in in the machine and in in. Now, there's a few documentaries. Uh, people get, talk about this, a few books, and even showing how the Rockefellers funded. Uh, various medical organizations schools and stuff to break these guys up and which brings me back to the snake oil merchants snake oil merchant what does he say he's always complaining everything's evil satanic or whatever give me a solution you idiot and they, they offer no solution and they're meant to be these expert researchers they don't how can they not know this well they do and they work for the corporation these guys are the machine and they they Whenever David Icke does a tour in Australia, they put him on mainstream TV. Uh, Alex Jones, as viewed on CNN and The View, he's a, he's a puppet. He's you know, whenever they want to pull someone out and make the conspiracy crowd look stupid, they pull these guys out because they're guaranteed to do an idiotic show and the normal person who hasn't been exposed to the finer details of it will think, oh my God, this, does this guy represent uh, this alternative stuff? Well, yeah. That's, these guys are tools, they're puppets. Uh, recently, um, he, uh, Alex Jones was going through divorce proceedings and had, he admitted that he is an entertainer, that he puts on a show. He's not a journalist, he's not a researcher, he is an in entertainer, a master of misinfotainment and fake alternative news. He does a great job of, of, he's an actor and he does a great job of it. He's brilliant at what he does, but what he does is not honest. What he does is not about finding solutions. He talks about all these noble things, but he never provides a solution. He's just, it's about making hate and division and, and ignorance, and that's what he does, and he's great at it. And so, uh, again, this has been written out of history. You can see it in the old encyclopedias. The Odd Fellows was, was noteworthy in 1973 by the year, the current year, the IOOF, the corporation, the demutualized Odd Fellows, is now a huge corporation here in Australia, one of the biggest financial services provider, but they've disappeared from the record. And the same thing happened with the, well, the Foresters is just another example. Why are they no longer noteworthy? They're historically very important, and they're still operating, even though now they're a corporation rather than a mutual aid society. Because this this is forbidden history. The, the, the conspiracy is against these organisations. It's not a conspiracy by these organisations. And snake oil merchants and misinfo merchants are, are masters at, at, in, at <laughs> keeping us dumb to this. And again, look, these are just intro. Again, I could do such a long... I could go on for quite some time. I'm meaning to do a, a, a long and detailed history of the Odd Fellows because they provide an excellent example of these types of organisations. Eventually, I'll get around to doing that because, again, very well recorded, written um, history. So, not just of the positive things that they've done for society, but also the, the, the conspiracy to break them up by the corporations, by the government, to get people dependent on the big organizations rather than the mutual aid societies. Uh, okay, this is the Washington Monument. Now, there are a lot of plaques which again show how important these groups were in the founding of the Republic and the founding here in Australia and New Zealand and Canada. And these, all, you know, why we used to have a, the, such a high standard of living and we've, it's only kept going down and down and down. But when these organise, when mutual aid, when people were looking after themselves and were not dependent on welfare, and we had strong families, we had 
good standard of livings, we had good prospects, we had good protections, and well, poverty is on the increase, and that's because we've lost this. This, this is these, these guys and these emblems, these symbols, these organisations are not the evil conspiring enemy. They are the solution, and we need to look go back at this. And again, through the internet, we IWF, we we are only getting more and more divided, and through the snake oil merchants who are promoted by YouTube and, who, uh, and, 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 and blindly followed by so many, uh, we're only increasing the divisions between one another. We're moving further away from where we need to be. Union, there is strength. In, <laughs> no true in union, there is strength. In disunity, there is, chaos, there is, there is poverty. There is weakness, and in union there is strength, and that's why we need to go back to these, and that's why I'm so passionate about it as well, because here we have a solution, and 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 the fakery by the so-called leaders of uh, Paul Joseph Watson, and these, oh my, really, really, I I, in, I I hold you in absolute contempt. You are meant, you know, you promote yourself as these defenders and protectors, but you're not. You're 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 just not, and you put and you car car these things, and you promote hatred and ignorance and division, and you have no solutions. You only you, you only encourage the negative. Uh, for instance, YouTube just keeps promoting this negativity. Even you know, even like I keep trying to, you know, but they just keep promoting it. And this is this is the machine at work. This is why this is not spoken about. This is why there is virtually no history about this ever talk, talked about. And the proof is in the pudding. When, a, when, when will this? You know, what? When does he say never, never? He only promotes. He's lining his pockets. An actor lining his pockets. He's he admits he he is a he plays a character. He doesn't play, and he's not a journalist. He's not a a, a a truth seeker. Blah blah. He's just he's taken it over, and these guys are the machine. These guys speak out against uh, the corporations, but they work for them. That's why they're promoted. That's why they always go on mainstream news. And the solution is for mutual aid society, and they've been they've been written out. Faith, hope, and charity. These are principles we need to embrace. These are uh, these are the symbols and the principles behind these. We need to uh, embrace them and lose the hatred of of these things. And in, I hope you understand now why these are, are so uh, important and so dangerous to to the machine. Is this, and these are all just all intro points. Please, you can just keep digging down, digging down on yourself, and you'll and you'll see. What, I'm not hot. Yeah, I, I can only touch on these topics that would would take hours and hours and hours to go through the, the history. But hopefully, you've got enough pointers, and hopefully, you can you know for those who are attached to this, you can. You, you, obviously, you don't have to take my word for it, but here I'm giving you the pointers where you can find for yourself and, and liberate yourself from the snake oil which is um, going around. Now, if you look into any organisation, a large organisation, you're going to find bad people, and bad people tend to float to the top, as they say. But the the building blocks, the majority of these, you know, we're, we're, uh, is the Queen's ahead of the, of the Church of England. Does that mean everyone who's in the Church of England is is uh, you know are operating on you know uh, royalty and and involved in all this nefarious stuff? The Pope and the Vatican that doesn't describe the bulk of um, of the Catholic community or any other religion or group. You see, there's always you know masters at the top, but the the essence of it, the truth of it, is is it's like the iceberg. The bigger part of it is is submerged. It's not seen. Any organ, any time you get a number of people together, you're going to get nasty guys, you know. And again, uh, yeah, so straight away you'll see standard comments. Uh, Masons are all all pedophiles, for instance. That's a constant thing that I always uh, always have to deal with. But where will you find where will you find these people? Where there are children, that's where they're attracted to, you know. And so. If someone makes a child charity, that doesn't mean that it's built by pedos for pedos. But pedos will get drawn to that, so that's why you'll find that's why it, that's why it happens, and that's why they'll gravitate to that. The psychopath will, you know, will do what a psychopath does, but 
that doesn't do we throw away every children's charity because a few you know monsters get involved no of course not no and yeah any organization that's large enough will you know people the monsters will you know like the lion goes where the food is you know he goes he, and he goes for the easy prey that's just the way the world is there'll always be bad people and they'll always gravitate towards the the weak and where they can find the victims but that doesn't mean that we need to get away you know um because lion eat baby uh wildebeest does that mean you know we don't get a, do away with the savannah the savannah is important well anyway i hope you get where i'm where i'm going with there because if you've ever been on youtube comment section anything regarded to this you'll just see it that it's just there it's persistent and it's really it's not it's based on these type of dudes spreading their uh their bs misinfo and that's what's going on there and yeah, so please do look into it a little bit further, a little bit deeper. You'll find that it's been written out of the history, and that's a shame. And this is because this provides an answer to the problems that we have, uh, rather than being the source of the problems that we have. It's a, it's, it's a classic trick, you know, to uh, call the solution the danger and then call the danger the, the fix. It's just, yeah. Anyway, with that, I uh, hope you got something out of this. I, I didn't really plan it too well, so like, it's a bit of a rant, a bit of a ramble, but... Anyway, have a good one.